Hi friends, this is Caitlin, and there has been a new Lawn Fawn 2022 release, and so it's time to make another flippy flappy card. So I grabbed my Just Add Glitter stamp set. This one is newly released, and I absolutely love it. We're going to be borrowing this little jumping mouse from the You Autumn Know. Then we're also using the new Splatter background stencil from Lawn Fawn, as well as my well-loved now Flippy Flappy dies. So before we get started, if you haven't already, please take a second to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It means that you join our crafty family. Um, it's totally free and you won't miss any of the fun inspirational videos I put up every Friday for Crafty Inspo. So I'm starting out by coloring in all of my little images. I stamped out both of the little mice from the Just Add Glitter set as well as that jumping mouse. So I'm coloring all three of my mice the same way using my E40 markers. I knew I was going to be using a lot of rainbow colors to color in all the accessories for this scene, so I decided to keep my mice really neutral. I really love how the E40 markers work for these mice, just kind of keeping them a little bit warm and soft, but you could also use any of the grays, earth tones. I also love them, especially in the warm grays. They're just so cute. Um, I love all of the mice stamp sets, so I was so excited when I saw that Lawn Fawn was going to be coming out with these crafting mice. I think they really hit the nail on the head with this one. So I'm coloring in the ruler, the scissors I did with the red, some blue ink. I'm gonna do some green on the glue. The papers above them are gonna be um, with some purples. And then the glitters, I did one pink and one kind of with my BVs. I also decided to add in some color on their cute little aprons. So one of those is orange and one is pink. So you can see I'm really using all of the different rainbow colors, really trying to um, keep it really bright and fun. I'm also going to end up going back in to add in even more little accessories at the end just to fill the scene out even more. But I decided to give them a little wooden table and I did the legs of the chairs in the same kind of wood grain colors and then the seats of the chairs I did one that was red and one that was blue. I really wanted to create kind of a rainbow effect across the card going from the reds over to you know the blues and purples on the other side. So I didn't stick to that 100% but once it's all put together it's super cute and I love how it turned out. So now I'm using my little wire snips to cut apart all of my dies. I tried to speed this up for you because this definitely was a time investment. This card took about an hour and a half altogether and uh, it was a, quite a project but I, the way it turns out just makes me absolutely so happy. It is so cute and it just makes me smile anytime I get to use it. I love the flippy flappy cards and how um, how much of a surprise it feels like, even when you know exactly what's gonna happen. It's just, it definitely stands out and it's a card that will definitely wow your recipient. So I was trying to figure out what paper I was gonna use. I thought I was gonna go with this yellow from the new, um, I think it's like a lots of bubbles or something. I'll have everything linked down in, below in the description box for you. But I ended up changing my mind and I grabbed this rainbow dot paper from the rainbow watercolor wishes paper pack from Lawn Fawn instead and then I thought I was going to use that striped blue but that ends up changing too. So I trimmed down my panel to be three and a three quarters by five inches. That's the standard kind of scene uh, dimensions that they want you to use with the flippy flappy. And I just cut a piece of craft cardstock that I'm going to use as my floor. And I decided that the plain craft looked a little too plain. So I'm going to grab my crunchy leaf ink from Lawn Fawn and a blending brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that right along the, um, the two sides and the, across the bottom just to give it a little more interest and a little bit of dimension. The next step was to start working on the flippy flappy mechanism. So I'm going to be trimming down a piece of heavyweight white cardstock to the same five inches by three and a quarter, three and three quarter inches. And I'm going to be using that, um, the main flippy flappy mechanism die that creates that kind of U-shaped cut with all the little folds built into it. So I am just going through and scoring all of those folds down and the die is really nice because it kind of gives you those embossed lines and I'm going ahead and writing my front and back marks on my 
paper. That just helps me to keep kind of everything on track of kind of what goes where. Lawn Fawn recommends that you do that. And every time I've done it, everything's gone really smoothly. So I've kind of just gone with their uh, suggestion and it's worked out pretty great for me so far. So I did grab that gray from the new floral stamp, um, sorry, pattern paper that came out in the last release from Lawn Fawn. And I was just checking through the rest of my kind of Lawn Fawn paper stash to see what else could go with it. But I really wanted to pull in more rainbow. So I grabbed this set from My Favorite Things so that I could use this really beautiful rainbow stripe for my pool tab. The only thing is that this paper is pretty thin. So I also cut the pool tab from a thicker white cardstock and I'm going to adhere those two together so that everything stays really sturdy and then I know my pool tab and my mechanism are not going to fall apart. So keep that in mind that you can definitely play with all of your stuff and kind of mix papers so that you know that the integrity of the mechanism is not going to be compromised but you don't just have to use plain white cardstock if you don't want to. So I'm adding some um, tape runner or adhesive tape to the back of that little fold and folding it right over and then I am going to just kind of make sure that everything's bending the right way and then I added my foam and I wish that I had used a little bit of thinner foam for this um, the length was perfect once I folded it over and the height was great but uh, once I did my mechanism I ended up having to trim down my little gift card panel and I think it's just because my foam was a little too wide so keep that in mind um, when you if you're building your own that you if you're planning on using that gift card attachment piece instead of like a critter I've never used the big piece before I've, I've only used the little critters so that it didn't matter how wide my tape was but you definitely want to keep in mind that if your adhesive foam is too wide and too close to the center of your card that that gift card panel will kind of attach and hit it so I, I laid this down and it was just a little bit crooked and it, I decided it was bothering me too much. So I very, very carefully peeled it up. Luckily, I hadn't really pushed down on my foam yet. So I was able to pull it up and make sure everything was aligned nicely. And with this kind of mechanism, you want to play with it a bunch and make sure that everything's moving smoothly so that your, uh, the paper kind of learns what it needs to do. So now I'm taking a piece of Studio Katia really thick acetate sheets and I cut the little gift card panel with that and I'm gonna go in with some Nouveau crystal paste I'm almost out of this so I think I'm going to get the lawn fawn glitter paste next just so that I can test it out and see how it kind of compares but I used up probably the last bit I have a little bit more in there of this glitter paste on that Studio Katia gift card and I'm just wiping the edges and you can see that's going to let us kind of create this glitter explosion coming out of our mechanism which is going to be super fun. So I trimmed my sentiment. I just cut it right in half with some sharp scissors from the Just Add Glitter stamp set so that the front of the card says when in doubt and then the inside of our little mechanism are popping up mouse is going to say just add glitter so i put that on a little piece of craft cardstock too that we're going to just trim down and i also cut the little arrow tab for the pool tab out of the same craft just to kind of pull everything together between the floor and the sentiment and then the pool tab i like to have things kind of showing up in threes whenever i can so i'm adding some tombow uh, permanent mono adhesive to my panel and I, you just want to make sure that you're avoiding the area where the actual mechanism is where that paper needs to move and that pull tab needs to slide up so I'm going in now first this is when it gets really fun for me is that scene building with all my little pieces so I'm going in and putting my table front and center and then adding in my chairs and my little mice and starting to add in all their little accessories and I wanted to keep the upper part of this card nice and open so that when our little jumping mouse pops out he's not really covering anything or taking away from the card but because of this I ended up thinking that I just didn't have enough accessories and the card looked kind of too empty or plain so I ended up going back and adding in some paint bottles a tape dispenser 
a couple of little finished envelope cards. So just some extra goodies to kind of put on the floor. Like they are really going to town. They're really crafting and making a good crafty mess, which if we're being honest is definitely one of my specialties as well. I had set my little acetate sheet with that glitter paste over to the side to dry and between kind of cleaning up all of that and taking my time kind of creating this scene, the paste was definitely pretty dry at this point, but to be honest, I probably could have left it for another maybe 15-20 minutes just to make sure that it was completely dry, but I was just so excited to see how this was going to come together. I may have rushed it a little bit. So I am going to glue my little mouse down and he's going to be holding those two glitter jars that I colored in that first section. Um, and he's just going to be jumping out and throwing glitter all over the place because, you know, when in doubt I glitter. So I added my sentiment onto him as onto that little sheet as well. And then I was kind of holding it up up against that white tab to make sure that everything looked good all together and the white part of that folded over tab was bothering me so luckily Lawn Fawn thinks of everything and they made a die that cuts a little rectangle out that covers that piece specifically so I did that uh, use that die to cut out a section of that rainbow stripe added that into place and then it was time to add my little gift card and my mouse so I just used a little bit of tape runner I ended up having to go back afterwards and really adhere this down with some nice strong liquid glue and give it some time to dry so keep that in mind that um, after you kind of create your card you definitely want to take your time and Kind of play around with using that mechanism and make sure that everything is pulling out correctly and is nice and strong so you can see i'm having issues here with that acetate sheet really grabbing on to my foam tape and so what i ended up doing was uh in a second i'm going to trim down the side so that it's not so wide but first I'm gonna add in those extra accessories that I colored up so you can see I have two envelopes it's a little bit of twine that cute little tape that I paint I colored in orange and uh, I tried to like I said before kind of keep that color gradient so all my warm colors are over on the left and my cool colors are kind of more over on the right so it's not a perfect rainbow across, a little more pre-planning on my part, and it definitely could have been, but I still think it turned out so cute. So you can see now, I'm very frustrated uh, with this is not working. I was so excited, and I really thought that I had it all figured out. And so uh, now is when I'm going to get brave and take my scissors to that acetate sheet. So I looked inside while I was folding it up and I just saw that those edges were catching on that foam. So now I'm going to go in and trim. And the nice thing is that because I created those splatters, it kind of makes sense that the acetate sheet doesn't need to be a perfect rectangle. It's fine for it to be kind of wibbly and wobbly back and forth, kind of curvy because it goes with those curves of the splatters that are already there. So once I trimmed that down, it was way easier. It still took a couple times of kind of playing around, but also giving it time to dry properly really helped uh, everything as well. So now I'm going in and making a card base to put this on. So I just took a regular piece of cardstock and pretty much cut it in half. I'm scoring it at my four and a quarter and I'm just adding my adhesive runner to one side and placing my card down. So this is gonna be a top folding Technically, it's still a side fold, but ours is going to open from the top. So now you can see, now that everything's nice and dry, I went back in and rechecked it, and my mechanism works perfectly. That little mouse pops right out. He is so stinking cute. This card just makes me so happy, and I think any recipient would be happy to get it. So I hope that you are feeling inspired. Uh, if you got new stuff from the Lawn Farm release, definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know what you got. And I hope that you have the most amazing week, and as always, happy crafting. <laughs>